we headed off into the field and um, we got a hold of a, a pretty good set of aerial photographs and we, most of the work up until that time had been done on the northern flank of the Barberton mountain land because that's where most of the go important gold deposits are. Um, along the Kamadi uh, Valley in the southern part of the, part of the Barberton mountain land, um, it, it was all just mapped as undifferentiated Ongverwacht or lower greenstone volcanics. Uh, but very little information, in fact. So people, I think, thought that it was just a boring pile of, of lavas. And, um, but anyway, when we got hold of the aerial photographs, we noticed that there were some pretty impressive trends and, and features that formed a very good stratigraphy. So we then decided we'd go and have a look at this succession um, first. And that's when we, we started doing a number of traverses and and came across this remarkable succession which just hadn't been mapped, uh, including pillowed volcanic rocks and then these interlayered ultramafic, ultra-basic rocks inter interlayered in these pillowed basalts. They were, okay, the ultramafics were massive? They were essentially massive, but they also had this, uh, this peculiar uh, texture which we initially described as crystalline quench texture. It's now known, of course, as spinifex texture. Well, right. Well, it, it's essentially a super cooling texture, yeah. exactly. We were influenced in, the, in our work. Of, it was essentially a mapping project, and we did extensive mapping. In fact, something which would be unheard of today, we, we, we mapped for four field seasons, so about seven months every year, seven to eight months a year, both the southern and northern flank of the Barberton mountain land in detail. And it was that mapping that really underpinned the whole thing because we were able to establish the field relationships, def define the formations, follow the formations, follow the marker horizons around structural features, major anticlines and synclines. And in this regard, uh, we do, did realize these rocks were pretty unusual, pretty special, particularly these ultramafic type rocks, which we just couldn't quite understand. At that time, we were quite fortunate in having a, a number of overseas and earth scientists visiting and they uh, were hugely influential in guiding us and giving us some of the clues to what we, uh, what we were looking at. And one of these, one of the most important ones I'd say would be Professor Al Engel of the Scripps Oceanographic Institute. And Al Engel was looking at abyssal tholeites and, and so-called low potassium tholeites that he was finding from his dredging and so on. And he just intuitively felt that in these ancient greenstone belts one would find some of the most primitive volcanics that one could expect to find on Earth. And then we also had people like uh, Mike O'Hara from, um, from Edinburgh. He was doing experimental work on, on ultramafic melts. And when we showed him this crystalline quench texture, he said, well, you know what, that's identical to what he sees when he quenches these high magnesium melts in the, in the, in the laboratory. Um, so, you know, so that gave us the clue to the fact that these were essentially some form of quench texture. And a very clinching fact in, in this whole or factor was the visit of Harry Hess from Princeton. And Harry Hess, of course, Which year was that? that is in fact 1969, the year that we actually presented our information at a big conference in Pretoria, a permanent conference in Pretoria, international conference. Harry Hess was there and we had, we had taken him to Barberton just before on a field trip there and we showed him all the evidence and he was he said you know, he was pretty convinced about it and when we presented the papers he was the first guy to stand up and say, and say he goes along fully with what we're saying he's been looking for ultramafic lavas his whole life and he, now he's seen unequivocal evidence of it and he, he supports this fully it's, there's no doubt in his mind that this is a major discovery of, of ultramafic um, igneous or volcanic rocks these commodities were being described from all over the Yelgarn block and elsewhere in, in Western Australia. And the, the term spinifex texture actually comes from Australia, being the spinifex grass. Right. Um, what were you calling it at that point? We called it this crystalline quench texture, yeah. uh, which is a bit of a cumbersome name, but spinifex is much more catchy. So the term spinifex has remained for the texture and commodity for the rock type, yeah. basically.